So very good morning to all of you and uh, we are in the uh, last day of our uh, five day international uh, webinar on the faculty development program and we have a wonderful guest today. Hi. And uh, we're going to talk about the intelligent uh, transport in uh, smart cities. And uh, imagine living in a city that understands you, your needs and always steps up to provide for them a city that is effortless to live in. Whether it is transportation, infrastructure, or overall development, a city which always stands true. The emergence of uh, new and exciting technologies that continue to make cities smarter has only added fuel to this dream. And one aspect of building a smart city that holds critical importance has to be having an intelligent transport management system. This successful implementation of the intelligent transport system uh, management stands testament to what the future can hold. This smart transportation system was successfully launched in India in 2017 and has played a monumental role in citing Ahmedabad as a smart city. This success story stands as an inspiration to India's smart city dream. It proves that this proper processes that optionally or optimally utilize the power of IoT and data analyzing technology building 100 smart cities is not far-fetched. But it makes another thing much clearer, having an intelligent transport management system is the heart of making this dream a reality. Among the recent smart city projects involved in the COVID-19 battle is the vegetable on wheels, as part of which e-rickshaws frequent residential societies to facilitate sale of vegetables. Artificial intelligence is a powerful concept still in its infancy that has the potential, if utilized responsibly, to provide a vehicle for positive change that could promote sustainable transitions to a more resource efficient livability paradigm. AI with its deep learning functions and capabilities can be employed as a tool which empowers missions to solve problems that could reform urban landscapes as we have known them for decades now and help them with establishing a new era, the era of smart city. One of the key areas that AI can redefine its transport and mobility provision and its impact on urban development can be significantly improved by the employment of intelligent transport systems in general and automated transport in particular. So this new breed of AI-based mobility, despite its mission orientation, has to be a user-centered technology that understands and satisfies the human user the markets and the society as a whole. And here we have our guest, uh, Dr. Wan Maslina, Wan Mohammed, head of training at Mitrans, who is going to talk about the intelligent transport in smart cities. And she is also an expert in uh, drones. Dr. Wan currently is a head training a continual professional development CPD at Malaysian Institute of Transport Mitrans, UITM Shah Alam, and senior lecturer at Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, UITM. She has received Airframe and Power Plant FFA certificate in 1987 from Parks College at St. Louis University, USA. And uh, she received her double degrees in aerospace engineering and aircraft maintenance engineering from St. Louis University, USA in 1989. And obtained MSc in air transport management from Cranfield University, UK in 1998. And she was awarded a PhD by UITM Malaysia in 2016 for her thesis on aeronautical revenues optimization model for regional airport via air side operation stochastic baseline matrix analysis. And her research area or interest on areas of research is air transportation, airports operation and management, airlines management operations research, operations management, railway management and unmanned aerial vehicle. 
and her field of specialization is aircraft maintenance, aviation management, and airport operations. And uh, she started her career as a uh, uh, aircraft planning engineer at Air Rod SDN BHT in 1989 and was promoted as aircraft superintendent in charge of C-130H aircraft modification in 1993. And um, she, her last post at Air Rod SDN BHT was a technical training manager in the year 1995-1997. And uh, she has uh, more than, um, sorry, she has more than 22 years of experience in as an academician. And uh, she joined the University of Science Malaysia as senior lecturer and later promoted to Deputy Dean of Postgraduate and Research, School of Aerospace Engineering, USM in 1998-2001, and joined Department of Mechanical Engineering, UNITEN, as Senior Lecturer in 2001. And uh, of course, she joined as a Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, UITM, Shah Alam, in 2003 as Senior Lecturer. And currently, she is actively involved in aviation and land transport research and consultancy, conducting training and organizing webinars, designs, teaching, and supervising students in UITM. And this is all about our guest today. And I will hand over uh, the stage to Van. Thank you so much, Patricia. Such an honor to be invited as your guest speaker. Okay, uh, the, the way you present makes me like, wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm just a very humble person. You know, I, I started, I think, one of the few uh, ladies, uh, aircraft engineer in my, in the those, those years. Eh? Now I'm already senior, trying to retire soon. <laughs> okay, um, uh, so uh, this is actually, I hope this is going to be a relaxed uh, ambience that we just share about experience about Malaysia and uh, India because uh, like you said, uh, uh, we have almost somehow rather quite in common in developing our cities and also what are the transport that we are trying to incorporate into making our cities become more sustainable and more smart. So uh, without further ado, I would like to share my screen. Yes, please. Okay. Right, everybody can see my screen. So I'm just talking about Malaysia experience. So I, because I, I know it's quite unfair like for developing country like us in Malaysia and India to to look into, I think everybody knows about European transport system, you know, they are already far advanced uh, compared to us. Okay, and I actually, actually last time I did my PhD in, in uh, TU Delft in Netherlands, but unfortunately my supervisor died and in an aircraft crash. So that's why I returned back to, to Malaysia to first finish my PhD in, in UITM. Okay, so it was, a, it's a, it was not a very good experience. Uh, having your supervisor uh, die in an, an aircraft crash. Like I said, uh, I'm in an aerospace field and uh, safety is our number one priority. Even one slightest uh, accident can cause someone to die, eh? fatality. Okay. So, while well, we talk about intelligent transport in smart cities, I put here Malaysian experience. Okay, so you already have introduced me. So as I guess everybody here, are, like you said just now, I asked you who are the participants. You said most of them are academicians. So I'm sure they are aware with the definition of smart cities. So I'm not going to dwell too much about the definition of smart cities. Okay, so we have, uh, you know that just now you also mentioned that smart cities are going up to use artificial intelligence. So the concept of smart city is a place where electronic and digital technologies are deployed to transform living and working environment. Okay, so there are quite a number of definition. In fact, I check uh, also with India that you have different parameters for smart city. Some call it like this one, some have eight, some have five, some have six, you know, I just take this one because I think it uh, parallel with our uh, with our policy, our framework. Eh? So par as par parameters of a smart city that we take uh, in Malaysia that we adopt is smart governance, smart mobility, smart people, smart environment, smart economy, and smart living. So these are the things that, th there are so many, do I, there are so many parameters, some say five, some say eight, and it depends on what par parameters you want to measure. Okay? So uh, as you say, smart governance, we want to improve the government services to the people, aspects like 
public participation, uh, public uh, efficient public and social services, uh, private partnership and transparent governance. I think just now you, you attended uh, my webinar series about the drone. We have quite a number of issues in the governance of how if you're going to deploy a drone okay, for delivery, uh, drone for uh, search and rescue and so on. So we, this is the main issue now we have with the uh, regulation. Okay? And in fact, uh, I was working last time with Ministry of Transport Malaysia on what are the regulations that we will have for uh, air division. Okay? So, and, and it's very important to have a transparent governance okay, if you want to move forward. Okay. So another thing is that we look into smart mobility, that is we want to increase the efficiency of public transportation, accessibility, mobility of people and traffic management through intelligent traffic management in the city. I think Malaysia is trying very hard. Uh, we started with, with our expressway and so on. So like, like you come to Malaysia, uh, our expressway, we already have uh, touch and go. So when we, 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 we have to pay toll, but then we don't need to. Now I think our toll, uh, at the highway or the expressway are cashless. So you, all you need is that you have to have a card. We call it touch and go. You just touch and then you go. We call it touch and go. So the aspect is that we want to have efficient road accessibility, efficient public transportation, non-motorized accessibility. I think people also now going to what you call healthy way of life. Uh, people start to walk and to cycle. But unfortunately in Malaysia, it's quite difficult. Uh, uh, maybe we could share you know, the challenges that we have is most main, mainly when you have done motorized accessibility is walking and uh, cycling in Malaysia is quite difficult to be a day-to-day, -day, a normal routine. Like when I was in Netherlands, we cycle every day or we walk every day. But in Malaysia, it's because of the weather. We have a huge torrent rain and we have uh, lightning and so on. So it's kind of difficult to encourage people to cycle or to walk, to, to work or to school and availability of ICT infrastructure. And then smart people, uh, to improve the urban people way of life, high human capital knowledge, high human, human index, uh, flexibility, resilient to the changing circumstances. I think uh, with COVID-19, uh, we can see that people really have to change very fast. Okay, uh, in fact, for us uh, at the university, all sudden, uh, we have to really you know, at the moment, the first week of, uh, of, the, the, of the MCO, the lockdown, everybody starts to buy the tablet, everybody starts to buy uh, iPad, everybody has to buy a uh, speaker, uh, uh, microphone and so on. We have to change, totally have to change. Uh, and we have to learn like Microsoft Teams, Zoom and so on, Skype and everything. Uh, before this, we take those things for granted. And uh, we have to have, be also a caring community. We have to have high develop, uh, human development index, okay? And uh, like you said, uh, uh, with this MCO, we have a lot of people being laid off. Yeah? So I think I'm not so sure about in the case of India, so, but here we also uh, we are thinking how to develop uh, hum uh, people who have been laid off, the workforce that have been laid off. And we need to have skill and talented human capital. And another thing like uh, in Malaysia, we have multi racial uh, community, so we want to have a racial harmony. So uh, technology somehow rather, uh, somehow rather sometimes uh, fill up the gap between uh, different races, different religions. Yeah? Okay, we have also smart environment. Uh, I think everybody is uh, uh, trying to balance between uh, environment and economy. So like you said, like now with COVID-19, COVID you see that one thing that the, the plus sign or the advantage of it is that uh, all sudden the environment is uh, less polluted. Okay, all sudden our city is uh, more greener, our river are cleaner, uh, and then we have our wildlife is also all sudden, uh, you know, even in front of my house, we have uh, squirrels, we have birds and all that coming out uh, because of the, the, the environment is cleaner. So we want to have a clean environment, environmental protection, green development and this one. So I'm not going to go much, I think. A smart economy, of course, we have economic growth, okay, competitive, we have to be competitive in economic globalization. And we also are now going about entrepreneurship. Uh, that is also one good thing that we, we notice here. Uh, the moment of MCO, uh, all sided, everybody becomes, becomes entrepreneur. 
and all, all of a sudden the logistic, uh, the delivery, you know, start to boom. Uh, every single people are now selling online. Every single people are selling on WhatsApp, and everybody selling on Facebook, Instagram, and so on. All of a sudden, uh, young and old, all of a sudden they become entrepreneur during the MCO. Okay, and then of course smart living, we have to have uh, safety and security, and then health condition, educational quality, and so on. Yeah? Okay, uh, what are the smart cities uh, in Malaysia? So there actually there are 26 pilot cities in Asian network. Uh, four of, out of the 26 cities are in Malaysia. Number one is Kuala Lumpur. Definitely Kuala Lumpur is the capital city of Malaysia. And we have uh, one in Kota Kinabalu, Sabah, that is on the East Malaysia. Uh, both of these, Kota Kinabalu and Kuching, they are in East Malaysia. And we have Johor Bahru at uh, the south of uh, Peninsula Malaysia. And uh, besides that, the place where I reside, Selangor, we have also Selangor Smart Blueprint. Uh, we have Cyberjaya and Putrajaya. This is, this is where the government uh, city or the government town, uh, every uh, government agency, government buildings are there. And Melaka actually is a, Melaka actually is a tourist uh, city. Uh, and then we have, uh, sorry, we have uh, very sensitive, and we have Penang. Penang is more a uh, heritage city, okay, so it's very popular with uh, tourists before, before the MCO. Okay, so why, why do Malaysia need uh, a smart city? Because we find that uh, urban challenges are arising and rapid urbanization to meet the national and global agenda. Okay, we have to be involved with the developing country to adopt new global uh, development trend. I said this now, we have to be involved with the uh, 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 developing country. And uh, we have to promote digital economy and to position Malaysia city to be on, on par with other cities globally. Yeah? Uh, so we, okay, uh, one of the thing is this uh, national transport policy. I was involved uh, in uh, the developing of national transport policy but under the air division. Okay, so uh, this one, this, this is the latest one, was launched last year in, in October, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this is uh, about the, uh, they combine uh, all the four, uh, uh, four areas, that is land, land transport, uh, rail, uh, air, uh, sea, and also the logistics. Okay, so they have... Um, they have uh, six trusts. That is, uh, one is to, uh, sorry, uh, one is to create conducive ecosystem and then facilitate seamless movement, provide mobility that meets the uh, expectation of the people, increase model share, deliver an intelligent safe. So they already include that into into our policy to have intelligent safe and security system and ensure efficient and sustainable use and minimize pollution. Okay. So this is the vision of uh, transport policy. Uh, so we have like economic constitution because this is sustainable. We, you, we use uh, sustainability as the base. Okay, so you have economic, social and environmental element. Okay, so we have five policy trusts that is uh, the governance uh, maintains transport infrastructure. So most of this thing goes to the trust number two. Okay, and enhance safety integration uh, towards green transport and expand global footprint. Okay, so currently in Malaysia, uh, this is the latest one as of uh, 2018, okay, because it's quite difficult to get the latest one. So this is, uh, the, the report came out in 2018, but they, they have uh, measured until up to 2016. So we have very good uh, net, uh, road network system. Uh, we have at the moment, we have for the rail, uh, we have about 1,989 uh, uh, kilometers of rail and urban rail. And we have increased in the rail network. Okay, we have ports, uh, federal ports, we have 10, state ports, we have, uh, sorry, federal port we have 8, and the state port we have 10. And we, we have uh, 16 domestic airport and 6 international airport. And we have short takeoff uh, landing port, at about 20. Okay, so uh, things are going well until recently because of the MCO. Okay, so we also have another uh, uh, Malaysian Intelligent Transport System Blueprint dedicated just for the Intelligent Transport. I mean, it's to, it's to show that Malaysia is very serious uh, about going towards uh, trans, uh, Intelligent Transport uh, System. 
Okay, and uh, the vision is that connecting mobility, safety and sustainable living in the urban and rural setting. Uh, the mission is to foster big data analytics in the planning and implementation the operation of national and regional transportation and logistic movement. So we are really actually very serious, okay. So we have five objectives that is seamless intelligent mobility, congestion-free network, safety, uh, commercial vehicle operation and collaboration between agencies. So this is also nice. I mean, I've read also in India, I think I saw quite a number of presentations on uh, slide share and all that when, when I was trying to develop my uh, presentation that India also are going uh, forward with this uh, intelligent transport. Right? So, and we have about nine IT sectors that as you can see in this graph. Okay, so I'm not going to go too much about that. Okay. Okay. And then the definition, of course, uh, everybody knows the definition of intelligence transport is that to have a noble approach in providing different transportation, advanced uh, infrastructure, traffic and mobility management through digitalization. That is number one. And also, you also mentioned just now about artificial intelligence system, wireless and communication. Dr. Wen, uh, sorry to interrupt. Can you please increase your volume? It's not audible. Oh, okay. okay can, you, can you hear me? Little louder. A little louder. I do. I do. Uh, can you hear me now? Better. Better. All right. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, all right. So we have uh, benefits of intelligence because we want to improve traffic safety and then reducing infrastructure damage and traffic control and uh, traffic control and parking management. And of course, uh, because of we gather with uh, sustainable, we want to minimize pollution. Okay, so like I said, we, we go, of course, everything starts with the capital city. So the government is very much uh, interested in, in developing Kuala Lumpur. In fact, my house in front of my house, I don't know, in front or you call it back, back of my house, we are, we are having the development of uh, we are having the development of uh, the new MRT3. So we are going to have a rail on the new MRT3. Okay. Um, so these are, these are the things. Yeah, we have an integrated, sorry, my, my computer is a bit sensitive. Uh, we have, a, as you can see here, we are having an integrated uh, map here. So we integrate uh, with, uh, with, with a, a train or rail. We have the LRT, uh, light transit. Uh, we have MRT. Uh, we even have bus, BRT. That's all integrated into the Greater or Klang Valley uh, transport system. Okay. Uh, and then uh, these are the Klang Valley. That currently, we have about 10 rail line that has been established. Okay. So we have the monorail. Sorry, the the the. The picture is not so clear. So we have the commuter. Uh, we have the LRT here. Uh, we have the LRT2. And then we have the KL. This is the one that uh, link between uh, KL town with the airport. And you have the MRT1. So now in front of my house, uh, that's okay. coming up with the MRT3. Okay. So they are already expanding. Okay. Uh, so this one I would like to show a bit on, I'm, sure, I'm not so sure whether you can hear the, the sound, but this is, uh, this is our uh, prasarana, uh, our I main operator. The promise of a new day. Can you the hear? The smell of freshly yeah. brewed coffee. And yes, even the morning rush. Like many others, I take the bus. It's safe, convenient, and affordable. The best part is, I can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the morning scene. The bus ride allows us to meet an array of people. And with technology, it's even easier to get information on bus services in the Klang Valley. And inquire about estimated arrival time of buses in Kwantan and around Penang. Parking and toll fees are the least of my worries when I take the bus. Plus, it's one way to help save the environment. Buses are for everyone.
It's convenient, connects people to places, modern facilities, and access to travel data online. Let's me plan my journey better. I could also bring my Foldy on board if I needed to. When it gets busy, the train frequency increases, reducing my waiting time. The future will also bring developments centered around transit hubs. A safe, reliable and integrated travel network across the Klang Valley. with upgraded stations, new trains and buses. It exists to help keep Klang Valley working and growing and to make life in this city better. Experiencing and seeing improvements made for millions of people traveling daily makes me proud to be a part of it. It can be a tough job and we don't always get it right, but we are committed to putting our customers first. Investing in continuous improvements of our services so that you may experience a safe and comfortable journey. We are proud to serve the major cities and be a part of its future. Connecting people and businesses for many years and generations to come. Today, I am part of a better tomorrow. Okay, and Dr. Tusha, can you hear the sound or can, yes, can you yes, hear? Yes, you fine. can. Yeah, okay, thank you. That's good. Uh, because I uh, you, luckily you put in uh, with Zoom. Because if you put with uh, Google Bit, I, I, I can. I have to take off my earphone. Eh? So those, this is Prasarana. They are the biggest uh, service operator in Malaysia. So they have the integrated system. Okay, they they not only like just now it says not only in Kuala Lumpur, but they have also the system in uh, bus system in uh, Penang and also Pantan and so on. Okay, um, sorry, uh, slightly sensitive. Okay, uh, okay. Okay, this now we have already been here. Okay, Prasarana. Okay, this is the uh, Malaysia model multimodal public transport operator, the biggest in in Malaysia. So they are, you know, they are using. They they also work with UITM. They always come and see us uh, to do for for them some consultancy. Uh, especially Mitran, we do consultancy for them for. We do consultancy for them, especially for passenger satisfaction. So for the last, I think, seven years, we've been doing uh, for the passenger satisfaction. Uh, so we have to go to all the, uh, the, the stations and all that. We have to interview what do Malaysia want? Uh, are we really satisfied with the current uh, uh, service that we provi they provide? Okay. So we also have park and ride facility. We already started using cashless system. So everywhere we go just now, you can see we just have touch and go. Uh, we also have uh, now, like you said, we already can have on the phone uh, when the bus is coming. Last time you have to wait and wait and wait. You have no idea when the bus is coming. And like we have transit-oriented development. Uh, oh, I think people are going towards that. For the uh, we also have for the bus station. Uh, if you go there, it's exactly like a shopping mall. You know, this transit. Uh, they're making a lot of money. A transit-oriented development. So they have like a shopping mall. Uh, they have all these boutiques, they have all these uh, expensive restaurants at this uh, transit-oriented uh, station. Okay, uh, and then they have integrated network with an autonomous train system since 1998. And already have, like you see just now, this MRT, all that, they have already a driverless uh, train. Uh, okay, another one we have, this I think in Indonesia is quite popular, bus rapid transit, okay. Uh, but in Malaysia, we have only one, but we are going forward. Uh, this is also another project that we will be going soon, uh, supposedly to start in March, but unfortunately because of MTO, uh, like I said just now, another smart city is in Johor Bahru, south of Malaysia. So we are going towards uh, bus rapid transit. Uh, here we have near the University Town in uh, PJ, in Kuwait Petaling Jaya. So as you can see, we have a dedicated elevated uh, 
what you call elevated uh, drive way for for just for the BRT. So 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 to we, to ensure that the bus is not stuck in the traffic jam. I'm not so sure, sure about India, but in Malaysia also we have a horrible traffic jam, especially during rush hour or peak hours. Eh? So otherwise the bus would not come on time. You say it's come coming at one o'clock, it comes at about two o'clock, you know, because of the traffic jam. So this one, uh, like you said just now, uh, because of um, uh, sustainable, this bus is all electric. So all the 15 buses are electric buses. Okay, so it's very quiet. Uh, it has uh, park and ride for the students. Okay, so the student and it's also connected to the uh, with the shopping mall. Okay, so this is the just to show how fast that they they work uh, on this uh, sunway. In today's fast-growing population, and with the increasing number of vehicles on the road, traffic congestion has become unavoidable. Banda Sunway and USJ have a population of over 500,000 residents. These numbers are on the uptrend and still grow. BRT will work out to be the best mode of transport to ease traffic congestion in Banda Sunway and USJ. The BRT Sunway line is the first BRT in Malaysia under the public-private partnership PPP between Prasarana Malaysia Berhad and Sunway Berhad. BRT Sunway Line is a design and build project. Construction period is 27 months. The BRT Sunway Line project was completed and delivered to Prasarana Malaysia Berhad on the 31st of May, 2015. 1st June, 2015. The grand opening ceremony of the BRT Sunway Line, the first bus rapid transit system in Malaysia, was officiated by the Prime Minister of Malaysia, Yang Ahmad Berhormat Datuk Seri Muhammad Najib bin Tun Abdul Razak. Oh, sorry. Sorry. This urban transportation network is fast, less pollution to the air as it uses electric buses, and convenient. The BRT Sunway line will connect key areas in Banda Sunway and USJ with seven stations. The entire 5.4 kilometer BRT alignment is fully elevated, and it integrates at KTM Satya Jaya and Kalana Jaya LRT extension line at USJ 7. The BRT system will be utilizing 15 electric buses, which will serve 500,000 users in Banda Sunway and Subang Jaya Salam. So, like you said, this is our boss. Uh, Prof Nasir's uh, logo, transporting happiness. So this is also like what Malaysia is trying to do is to transport, make sure that people are happy. Uh, so like you said just now, uh, even BRT is cashless. Okay, they use a coin or a token or you can just, just use cash and go. Another one is our, our most significant uh, uh, transport is our rail. We still maintain the Malaya, Malayan Rail Railway Limited. We call it KTMB. We still didn't change to Malaysia, okay? Because it's been developed since 19, uh, 80, uh, 1891, okay? And we have already moved forward. And at the moment, we already have like uh, electric train, okay? 
So uh, this one connect the entire peninsula Malaysia and uh, at the moment we just have this on the west coast and then we are trying to to develop now the ECRL on the east coast. Okay, so this is the, the real network and uh, the nice thing also here that uh, in Malaysia, like you said, tra transporting happiness, we even have a we even have a dedicated ladies coaches. So for, for those who are taking train, uh, we call it the commuter for daily. We even have a dedicated uh, pink coach just for ladies. So we, we want to ensure their safety, not only in terms of uh, safe uh, and to arrive, but they also safe in, 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 in the coach. Okay? Sorry, sorry. Very sensitive. Lebih luas dan mesra pelanggan. ETS menghubungkan dua bandar, yaitu Seremban dan Ipoh melalui Kuala Lumpur. Pada tahun 2015. KTMB telah memperkenalkan ETS Express. Laluannya dilanjutkan hingga ke Padang Besar Perlis melalui Butterworth di utara Senajung Malaysia dan ke Gemas di selatan tanah air. ATM antara bandar telah diperkenalkan lebih sedekat yang lalu. Operasinya merentasi tiga buah negara iaitu Semenanjung Malaysia, Thailand, dan Singapura. Kerabatnya dilengkapi dengan katil-katil untuk kemudahan penumpang-penumpang merehatkan badan dan melelapkan mata khususnya bagi mereka yang menempuh perjalanan jauh. Pada tahun 1995, sejarah telah tercipta apabila KTMB telah menawarkan perkhidmatan kereta api elektrik pertamanya. yang menghubungkan Tanjung Malim ke Pelabuhan Kelang dan Batu Caves ke Pulau Sebang, Tampin. Perkhidmatan kereta api elektrik ini dinamakan sebagai KTM Commuter. KTM Commuter Utara memulakan operasinya pada tahun 2015 yang menghubungkan Padang Rengas ke Bukit Mertajam dan Batuwet ke Padang Besar. Perkhidmatan KTM Commuter telah menjalankan fungsi serampang dua mata apabila terbukti berjaya mengurangkan masalah kesesakan jalan raya di samping mengurangkan beban sara hidup rakyat dengan menawarkan kadar tambang berpatutan. Skypark Link merupakan perkhidmatan kereta api ekspres terhad di Kuala Lumpur. Laluannya menghubungkan dua terminal pengangkutan darat dan udara iaitu KL Central di Kuala Lumpur dan lapangan terbang Sultan Abdul Aziz Shah di Subang. Skypark Link di bawah pengurusan KTMB telah memulakan operasinya pada 1 hari bulan Mei 2018 sekaligus menjadikannya perkhidmatan kereta api kedua yang menghubungkan lapangan terbang dengan ibu kota Kuala Lumpur selepas ERL Express Rail Link. Bagi tujuan kemudahan, sebuah stesen baru telah dibina terletak berhadapan dengan lapangan terbang Subang yang dinamakan Terminal Sky Park. Selain menyediakan perkhidmatan kereta api penumpang, KTMB juga masih meneruskan perkhidmatan kereta api kargo atau kereta api barang. Sistem laluannya yang strategik melalui kawasan-kawasan simpanan logistik, depo-depo kontena hingga ke pelabuhan laut menjadikan KTM Cargo sebuah sistem pengangkutan yang sangat berkesan. Bagi melahirkan generasi pelapis untuk warga kerja KTMB, Malaysian Railway Academy atau MIRA telah ditubuhkan. Dengan tenaga pengajar yang berpengalaman, pembangunan modal insan kini lebih terjamin untuk memacu sektor pengangkutan awam. Lain hulu, lain parang. 
lain dahulu, lain sekarang. Begitu juga dengan KTMB. Untuk menjadi kekal relevan, KTMB telah berubah mengikut peredaran zaman. Kemodenan menuntut kita untuk bergerak dengan lebih cepat tanpa mengetepikan aspek keselesaan dan keselamatan. KTMB akan terus kekal di hati rakyat bukan semata-mata kerana sejarah perkhidmatannya tetapi kemampuannya untuk terus cekap berkhidmat demi kepentingan dan kesejahteraan bersama. KTMB Okay, thank you. Uh, in fact, this now when it shows about the port, we also have, uh, it, in fact, now we are developing uh, uh, on the, the system. We call it, we, we call it as U-Custom, uh, where all the uh, shipment comes to the port instead of going to manual procedure, of, of uh, going through the manual procedure through the custom, we are now developing another uh, apps that you call it U Custom, where all the, the the goods are declared in advance. So when they just arrive, then it will be automatically sorted already to the destination. So uh, those are the things that we are going to towards this uh, uh, intelligent system. Okay, uh, this is uh, the one that we have for the electric train service to go from uh, KL to uh, Kuala Lumpur uh, to KLIA, the airport. So, oh, sorry, this is electric train. Actually, sorry, this is the electric train. This is our latest baby. It started, I think, last three years ago. And this is the most favorite uh, mode of transport now. Uh, people traveling from KL uh, to the north, you know, to even to Penang and all that. The, this one, you have sometimes you have to book in advance for this train uh, because they it really emulate like you are uh, traveling like on a plane. Just now, like you can see, they even have stewardess to serve you. Uh, they even have uh, videos for you in, uh, on board entertainment and so on. Eh? So this is our latest baby in, in Malaysia, the electric train. And it, the, the, it can go as fast as about 140 km per hour. Okay, and this is uh, the KLI Express. This is between the TOD just now that you have transport. Uh, transit, uh, transit develop, uh, transit operation uh, TOD from uh, Kuala Lumpur to the airport, the international airport. Uh, is it working? So if it's not working. Arriving home at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport, my choice of transport into the city is the KLIA Express. After picking up my bags, I can easily pick up a ticket from the dedicated counters or platform vending machines, but I usually prefer to book online before flying. The 
non-stop train ride is safe and reliable and takes only 28 minutes. This service connects KL International Airport to KL Central Station in the heart of the city. Like most of us, I can never wait to get home after a long trip and the e-ticket I print out with my online booking saves me that extra bit of time when the train arrives. And speaking of KL Central, it couldn't be better connected to the city's transport system. It's easy to get taxis, but I prefer to take KL City trains for my ride home. KLIA Express, the fastest airport transfer in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, so this is KLIA, like you see, it's all integrated with even your, with your boarding pass. Okay. So you can even drop your bag and then, then after that, uh, you can check in your bag at the KL Central and then you can retrieve your bag when you arrive at the KLIA. So those are the integrated system that we have now. So. Okay, uh, challenges, however, we have a, a quite number of challenges in implementation of smart transport in Malaysia. Uh, one of it is like we have limited parking spaces. Uh, these are the issues, not that we, we already, like, like I said, uh, we have done quite a number of uh, consultancy projects where we ask uh, from uh, the municipal, for example, like KL municipal, they ask us to do why they are still, the, our target didn't reach. Uh, for people to take public transport, but when, when we do a survey and most of the uh, passenger or the people around the area says that it's not that they do not want to take the public transport, but they have limited parking spaces at the LRT or the MRT station. And also like, you know, due, due to uh, economic situation because of like MCO currently and all that, we have delay of projects. Uh, like the current high speed rail we are supposed to have from Thailand to Singapore. Uh, but then I think at the moment the project is being cold for a while. And then we have also the East Coast Rail just now. We're going on the East Coast side uh, where to connect uh, from KL to the, the other side of the uh, Malaysia. And then of course the cost of infrastructure development and investment is extremely high uh, due to our, the economic situation uh, now probably the government has to hold certain uh, development. And the cost of maintenance of infrastructure is also high. Uh, so, like I said, uh, we have to maintain the track, we have to maintain the pavement, we have to maintain uh, the buses, the train, and so on. Yeah? Uh, sometimes we have also a lot of vandalism uh, in, in Malaysia, uh, uh, and that costs also a lot of maintenance costs. Yeah? So, uh, another step that we are going, we have to actually to uh, conduct awareness that for public to make sure that they they take care of the pub, uh, public property. Okay, and another the, the other challenges are that public pre pre prefer, uh, preference. Uh, they prefer to trust their own vehicle, especially now uh, after COVID, uh, MCO has been lifted. Uh, the price of the car in Malaysia is extremely cheap. Not not I don't say extremely cheap, but it's slightly cheaper uh, than before. So people are rushing to buy cars. Okay, so now if you go, the first thing that people go either either to the supermarket or they go to the car dealers. Okay, and uh, public awareness. Uh, we still have public who are not bothered to know the existence of public transport service offered. Okay, quite a number. That's why I show you this. I, I think probably you in India know more about our public transport than our own people in Malaysia knows about public transport. They, I don't think some of them even watch the video of KTMB or ERL and so on. Okay. Uh, the weather in Malaysia, we have uh, heavy rain, uh, torrent rain, lightning and thunderstorm. And we have a lot, like last two days, we have a flash flood all of a sudden, uh, the entire uh, highway uh, flooded or even the station are flooded. So those are the issues that we have about the weather in Malaysia. Accessibility, sometimes we do not have access to workplace, school and public transport. We still, uh, we are still lacking in terms of the feeder. So now we are looking into, into uh, have feed, feeder system. 
uh, that's why I think we are trying to adopt like in Indonesia you call it Gojek uh, where you have the motorcycle uh, you know we, uh, like Uber or Grab uh, we already have Grab uh, but we, have, we, we still have to look into uh, feeder, feeder system uh, okay and location of the bus stand station or hub is quite far walkway not available and uh, last but not least uh, is the traffic jam punctuality. So sometimes people do not want to take the public transport because of uh, it's still not punctual due to the traffic jam. Okay, so our experience, uh, we try to we try to uh, increase the volume of the passenger or the ridership. So one of our experience, like the last two years, we work with Scania. Uh, instead, we have uh, instead of having a normal of fifty meter bus, uh, we are excuse me trying to get the government to approve on the fifteen meter bus. Uh, the normal bus is uh, twelve meter, but we, we we are trying to promote to the government to approve on the fifteen meter bus and uh, the single deck uh, because why uh, or bus operator find or coach operators find that it, they would like to to buy uh, or they prefer single deck bus rather than double deck. The thing is that with double deck bus, sometimes the resale value is not that uh, as good as a single deck bus. Okay. Uh, and another thing is that with, with this latest bus, we have a built-in fleet management system. So it can monitor the drivers and vehicle performance real time. So in the, uh, at the control station, uh, the own the operator of this bus, for example, in the, for this 50 meter bus, the operator is E Mutiara. Uh, they can monitor the driver's behavior where they stop. They can uh, monitor uh, how long the bus is on idle. Uh, they can monitor the behavior of the driver uh, on on real time. So this is our experience. We we had this. Um, so the work that we carry out that we to value whether the high capacity bus will increase the productivity and efficacy of road transport on highways in Malaysia. Uh, and, and then we also provide scientific evidence that this bus is able to op operate to, uh, to the government. And we did a study on infrastructure, uh, traffic safety and total operating economy. We, do, we compare also this bus with a double-decker bus which is more, which is more uh, economical to run, uh, which has uh, better fuel consumption. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, traffic safety, with the uh, tra traffic infrastructure, so far we have tested the bus has no problem in making a circle or uh, uh, at the roundabout or even going into the uh, bus station. Okay, so we have already written our recommendation. Uh, to the government that it shows that uh, a long single deck bus is compatible to operate in Malaysia uh, road okay. and uh, for, as for the terminal required the bus able to go through without any problem and so far it's the, the only thing that is that we recommend that drivers who will be driving this bus will have a special training okay. but that one will be provided by the OEM, the bus manufacturer either Volvo or Scania uh, they will provide the training okay. This is our going to be our latest uh, project. Uh, it is uh, on hold because of the MCO of the Mokon Control. We are supposed actually to go to China in March, uh, but unfortunately to bring in the vehicle. Uh, this is, I think, uh, we have uh, quite a number of uh, cities that is looking into this uh, new uh, automated rapid transit ART. Uh, uh, this is from uh, we are. We are talking with the government and also with the authority into bringing in this uh, vehicle uh, to smart cities like we like say this now in Johor Bahru. Okay, so this is going to be quite a, a, a new project for us. Okay, this have uh, about 30 meter long if it has three carriages uh, and it can go up to 70 kilometer per hour and carry up to 300 passengers. Uh, we try to categorize this as a bus because it, it, it drives on the road, uh, but it doesn't need any special track, so it's not a train. So the advantage is that it has uh, wheels and it's also electric. Uh, and so far it has superior uh, capacity uh, compared to the bus BRT. So our, our BRT bus, maybe they can carry about uh, maximum its seating capacity is about 40 passengers. Okay, so this one can go up to uh, 300 passengers and it's lightweight and it's simple manufacturing uh, and it's allowed to be uh, assembled locally. 
And this is for the three carriage. Uh, like I said just now, it can basically it can go up to 300. Okay. Uh, it is fully electric. Okay. Uh, this is the internal. It look as the the in, uh, the interior looks exactly like uh, LRT or MRT, like train, but actually it's a it's a bus. Yeah. It's a, a, it, it is like, it is actually an articulated bus. Okay, except that the length is uh, about can go up to fifty meter or thirty meter. Okay, uh, so it has quite a number of uh, safety features. Okay. Uh, we're not going to get so the cap uh, has a portable so this, this is uh, you can see that okay so these are the safety features so we even have side view cameras we have a radar here to detect we have side signal and then front view uh, front and rear view cameras okay so uh, the the driver or now they don't call it driver for this one they call it pilot or they also call it pilot so the pilot can see uh, from inside, from the cockpit, uh, all the movement of the passenger and also the surrounding of the vehicle. Okay, this is a uh, sorry. Uh, this is the proposed tested area. It's supposed to have about one for eight point one kilometer, but I heard the la the latest one they have cut short to four four kilometer. Okay, uh, so we hope by September uh, we will be able to start the pilot testing. Okay, so this is the proposed station, and uh, this is the integrated system. So, because this is from China, so you have to translate it. So, you have a platform software management, you have this where you buy the tickets and so on. So, it's all interconnected with satellite uh, and the bus, and uh, this is uh, on the electricity and so on. So, this is the, the system. Okay, uh, so this is the pilot operation in China. We have presented this to last week to the Ministry of Transport Malaysia, mm -hmm. and uh, they are. It seems that they are quite happy, uh, uh, and they, they are looking so much. They are looking forward for us to bring in the system. But for Mitran, we have been awarded to make sure that it are able to operate safely. Because I think our main concern is, like I said, it's not about the technology so much. It's about uh, our people. How are they going to react? The I and the other road users. How are they going to react? That is our main concern. So our our research will be looking into uh, the integration with other road users. It's, the the system, like you said, is is in place. Uh, the integration of 
people buying the ticket and get in and then uh, link take into uh, with the bus leader and so on. That 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 is not so much of a problem. But our main concern here, um, most of the time, is about the public the public perception. Uh, sometimes our public uh, they are they are not aware of the danger. Like oh, like for example, just now the 15 meter bus Scania. Uh, most of the time that we have traffic conflict uh, that we observe is about human uh, human behavior, uh, human carelessness, uh, human attitude. Uh, those are the main issue that we really have to look into. Uh, I'm not so sure because that's why we also have to go to China. Maybe China, uh, the people there, the public there are more civic minded compared to Malaysia or something like that. Okay. And, and uh, the, like they said, now also uh, we are looking into the drone. Uh, this morning already, I had a two-hour session uh, to, to the university talking about drone. Uh, we have a lot of theories. Uh, whether is it possible for us to deliver uh, packages, especially, especially during this uh, control movement, uh, using drone. Okay, so these are the, the one that I took uh, the trial or the testing in Malaysia that they have done. I think Dr. Usha, you are repeating it again, I guess. Eh? <laughs> you watch already this morning. Dr. Rizal just now this morning shown uh, this. Okay, so it's quite funny, um, but there, there's still a lot of other issues because I think if you you buy a five, uh, ten ringgit dollar worth of clothing and the drone costs you about two, two or three thousand, uh, we are also making jokes whether people taking the drone or people will taking the parcel. Okay, so because uh, whether our our people are ready to 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 accept this kind of uh, delivery, we are afraid that. If you deliver a KFC for 10 ringgit and then the drone cost 3,000, I might as well dump the KFC and take the drone. Uh, uh, um, okay, and uh, this is also another testing about food delivery. I think uh, uh, this morning, I think uh, Dr. Usha heard also that uh, Dr. we are not very happy with the way of uh, how the food is being packaged. Okay, so this is inside. This is another, uh, then a smart city.
Sekarang ni kita akan gunakan aplikasi satu ordering tu aplikasi. So dalam masa proses daripada ordering sampai makan tu sampai ke tempat destinasi dalam masa bawah 12 minit. Cuba cuba anda dulu bila cuba tu dah percaya dan baru kita open pada public dan kita akan tambah jenis makanan mana yang kita dah percaya untuk bantu. Sekarang ni kita kita dalam mungkin kita cari dalam satu Uh, delivery tu uh, ataupun satu tadi kita charge dalam guna sekarang hmm. uh, so agak affordable dan kita sebenarnya it's not so much pada harga so much on the time frame maknanya lebih cepat daripada yang conventional rider hantar dan uh, kita pun dah develop drone ni maknanya dalam masa cuaca yang tidak itu hujan boleh fly tapi bukan hujan lebat lah. So I'm sorry it's in Malay but what that says is that the 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 duration is about 12 minutes maximum okay for it to deliver the food and uh, uh, the trip the distance is maximum is about 12 km so the delivery charge they said they're going to charge only 2 ringgit and 50 cent I'm not so sure but the the tedious of putting and flying the drone that is the the main problem is it worth or not to send by drone Okay, still, this is still on uh, ongoing uh, study, eh? uh, and also we have problem with legislation. Yeah? Okay, and uh, this is also been used recently to disinfect a uh, high-rise building, especially for the quarantine area. Uh, okay, so for during the MCO. Setiap hari kita suruh Datuk Bandar tentukan kawasan Cuma kita dahulukan kita ada yang uh, legal vehicle punya uh, Dan kita nak tengok the whole range uh, Bila kita uh, ada kawasan yang lebih besar Kita perlu disegerakan uh, Lihat uh, kesesuaian Kemudian Datuk Bandar akan membuat kajian dulu uh, Maksud bukanlah kajian nak, nak pakai 2-3 bulan Dia tengok kesesuaian jadi di mana sesuai guna drone, kita segera guna drone sebab mungkin kita tidak cukup cuci tangan. Yang pentingnya effectiveness. Kalau kita berbelanja, kita kena pastikan dia nya uh, efektif dan sesuai. Ada tempat sesuai, ada tempat tak sesuai. Jadi biar pihak mana raya yang menentukan. Dan kalau dia fly terlalu tinggi, kita tengok tadi, kita tak pasti adakah dia punya bahan disinfektan tu sampai ke sasaran. Jadi kita tengok nampak cantik dia terbang tinggi tapi adakah dia membunuh. Uh, virus atau kuman yang kita mahu. Jadi kita, kita kena kaji semua itu. Ya, saya nampak kalau kawasan terbuka, dia lebih efisien. Tapi kalau kawasan yang sempit. Tapi ada juga tempat-tempat yang memang kita terpaksa pergi tinggi. Terutama sekali kalau bangunan yang tinggi, kita tengok tingkat kita nak study boleh kerja drone semua masuk ke koridor-koridor bangunan yang, yang bertingkat-tingkat. Kalau itu dapat dilakukan, dia jimat banyak tenaga. Tapi kalau tak sesuai, ada tinggi, angin kuat atau misalnya maka kita paksa menggunakan individu untuk pergi daripada lantai ke lantai Ok, so what sorry again, it's in, in Malay uh, but what it says that they still have to study because how effective when they spray the disinfectant that it reach everywhere so maybe if it's an open open building is fine, an open situation but when it comes to, you know, you have uh, corners and so on it might not be uh, not might, might not be viable Okay, this is a very short one, but I think Dr. Reza has more. But this is a short one with our experience that we developed in the universities. 
so I have this my final year project student last time we just use uh, DG phantom uh, DG uh, to try to deliver something by dropping uh, the medical aid box uh, on the ground but uh, actually according to our rule we are not allowed to drop anything from the air using even using parachute but this is just a student's a student project uh, so where the student carries the, the thing uh, with this and then uh, we come to a certain altitude uh, we ask him to drop uh, the package and we see whether it's drop on the target or not and so and see whether the pressure this is a very cheap low cost uh, project i think it doesn't even cost you a few hundred ringgit only the only thing is that they, they have to hire the drone uh, But this, this is the thing is, uh, if, if it's, it's, uh, the condition is fine, it's okay, but we have a very strong wind, it's, it's not practical. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the latest one my master student did, is that to have a um, uh, NAMTO tree for medical drone delivery. So instead of having the parachute, what we did is we have a slanted uh, carrier. So when it opens, it just drop off uh, uh, the, the medical kit. So this one, if the payload is only 0 0.5 uh, kilogram. Uh, okay, this is all off the shelf. We buy everything. We can even buy from Shopee or Lazada uh, or this woman. Eh? Just ordered from China. Okay, so this is the simple flight test that we did. I think Dr. Usha recently watched this earlier. Those are our students' uh, project, and they already went for competition. Okay, so this is the one that uh, the their, their next project to have uh, able to have a higher payload uh, to deliver to see how it goes. Uh, so and able to fly further for thirty minutes. Okay, and able to fly in uh, light rain condition at the moment. It's only uh, at the moment the the Namto three is quite small. Okay. So the advantages of drone, like you say, it limit to human contact, uh, remote control, able to cover uh, a lot of ground in short time, faster and safer operation, lower cost to operate, of course, compared to hiring an aircraft or helicopter. Uh, this is like for cloud seeding or even for you to have uh, aerial photography if you want to do a film and so on. So now people are using drone to, sh to shoot for cinema. And okay, the, but the, we also have the disadvantage that is number one is the limited payload, uh, limited endurance, uh, unable to operate during all weather condition, uh, privacy violation, unclear legislation, uh, safety issues in terms of loss control or loss of connection, and no control on the drone operators. We have no control because if anything happens, they are at the moment they are not uh, registered or certified drone flyers. Okay, so like I said, please, uh, this is for private use only. Do not share because some of the material source from the internet and not addressed or cited properly in this slide. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Thank you.
And thank you, Dr. Shah. Thank you. Stop sharing yeah. the screen, please. Okay. So that was wonderful. Uh, yeah, okay. Ruan. It's a long, a long one. The videos were in Malay. <laughs> So yeah, a lot of the radios because some of the the videos are from the government, so they're Malay because they they ask when because when the government officer they have to speak in Malay. Yeah, some of the like like prasarana that's the is a is a corporate video then they can do it in English, but the government video like the KTMB, the rail and all that they are government uh, agencies, so they speak in Malay. So sorry, but luckily, but they still have some subtitles. <laughs> some don't have. Okay. And I have a few questions uh, with you. Uh, one, uh, one very uh, in, um, about to say, like a surprising thing is, you, uh, you have done uh, double degree, isn't it? In yes, year. I did. I did. Yeah, and when I was I younger. Yeah. See that the year is nineteen eighty nine, the same year uh, when I passed out my B B. Oh, okay. So and, you uh, must add the same I'm surprised. How come you got uh, influenced or interest towards taking up mechanical engineering or aeronautical or airspace, aircraft? Because those days it was not a big fancy for. Uh, yes, America. for a lady. Yeah, I actually I'm. Uh, in my college, I mean, for for the Malay, uh, Malaysian yes. community, there were only two 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 yes. ladies. Uh, I request the participants kindly mute for some time, please. So at that, at that particular time, there were only two two ladies that taking aeronautical uh, aeronautical engineering. Uh, actually, uh, the the reason I took <laughs> I took aerospace was actually I. I am more interested in design. I was thinking about about um, you know like architect, uh, like interior designer. So and then after, after when I I joined uh, the university, I said, oh my god, it was so difficult, extremely <laughs> difficult. You know, it was so extremely difficult uh, doing aerospace. Oh oh my god, I mean like uh, it's really a tough time for me, especially in US. Uh, and I was only the age I was already only about eighteen years old. So it was a very difficult time for us, especially when we have no idea when we, we join. Uh, actually, aircraft maintenance engineering is to become a licensed engineer. Yes. I have no idea when people, I haven't seen an engine, I haven't seen a car engine, and they were talking about four stroke. And we also have to fly. Uh, then, but after that, you know, the interest starts to come in. And then after that, I work, I think when I worked with Aerod, I was also uh, the only lady who's in charge of C-130. Uh, so, life is okay, good. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I like it, okay. What was uh, your role in Aerot? Okay, I, I started, okay, because, okay, the, the thing is that the government, uh, government of Malaysia, uh, they didn't know when they sent, uh, that's why I have two degrees. Uh, the first one is aircraft maintenance engineering, but it was under FAA. Uh, Federal Aviation uh, Authority. Mm. So Malaysia, like us, we are Malaysian and India. We are under the British, isn't it? So when I came back, uh, no, before I came back, the government then realized, oops, sorry, they sent us to the wrong country to get <laughs> our aircraft license. Uh, that's why I ended up to have aerospace engineering. So because FAA is not being approved by Malaysia, we are under CAA. So uh, so I have to do. A, Aerospace engineering. That's why I ended up to do aerospace engineering, and that is really, really tough. I guess um, when, when I came back in, in, in uh, came back to Malaysia because uh, some of my friends they have to to do all over again. They have to join like Malaysia Airlines that particular time to do all over again their aircraft license uh, because like I said, uh, uh, and they have to sit again the exam with CAA in Malaysia. Uh, whereas I joined with uh, Aerod, Aerod is a military, uh, aircraft, uh, aircraft repair and overhaul depot. So it's military, so I joined as an aircraft engineer, so it was not that, that strict. So we, because we still use as a military rule, so they not as strict as commercial to become the licensed engineer. Uh, I started as a planning engineer, so I start with the engine and then after that I was upgraded. I was in charge of C-130 because we have a uh, a problem of uh, the aircraft jump chalk. It was a mistake by one of the officers. It jump chalk and the nose uh, and the left wing strike, uh, strike the hanger, hanger door. So we have to repair, cut off the bucket and then cut off the, the left hand wing and, re and replace with a new bucket and a new wing. 
So that that project cost about forty million, and that time I was only twenty seven years old. <laughs> so uh, 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 so uh, so that was a good. I think that was the best part, after the best thing in my life at that particular time. I have about hundred over uh, technician under me that to to repair and replace avionics and so on to replace the aircraft. So it was it was a, a, a tough job, but it was a, a great experience. So a war, big war for all women. Ah yes, <laughs> I, I wish that's why I say I I wish to to join you one day when I retire to to give motivation to to the girls that. Okay, hey, you can survive. I, I, I live. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm the only lady. I think all the hundred technician are all guys. Uh, I have to really like. You are 27. You are young. You are small. Uh, <laughs> and they, these guys are huge and big, and they bully you a lot. And uh, you really have to, to, to stand up to them. Okay, okay. And okay. I'm impressed with the two arts in your presentation. One is okay. your. Uh, art of your letters and the second okay. one is the art of the car which you showed i mean the bus which you which you showed the transport okay. what is okay. your role in that uh, art uh, transport okay okay both uh, both project the scania project i was a, a, a project leader now uh, for scania um okay uh, what we have to do for scania actually as uh, we have to because uh, malaysia uh, the longest bus that we have now, even the double decker, is only 12 meter. So in the regulation, they only have 12 meter bus. Um, uh, and uh, the, in fact, in fact, uh, they have imported the 50 meter bus earlier, but they went and tested it uh, in Kuala Lumpur itself, and it failed. And then, uh, and then they. They have to revive it again. So I came in with with and then uh, and then uh, Scania awarded that, that contract to to us. And then what we do is that we have to get a temporary conditional approval from the road transport authority because they have no uh, no regulation to say that this bus is safe to operate in Malaysia. And they want to see whether because the road that we have, I'm, I'm not a civil engineer actually, uh, but when I go in, but I have to, to know a little bit. Uh, but of course, in my team, I have civil engineers in, in my team. So they want to see when the bus is turning and so on, does it have any impact on the road furniture? Uh, does it have an impact on the roundabout? Uh, does it impact of scrape when they go into the uh, bus terminal, uh, into arrival and departure? So we really have to do uh, a, a several studies. It took it took us about eight months to study. Uh, we put on about a, a camera on board for for two months. So we have to monitor every day uh, to see the traffic conflict, how people react with, with the bus. Uh, at the moment, I'm, uh, the regulation is still not been uh, awarded yet, uh, but the bus is already on uh, on operational based on temporary condition. Uh, so you are doing China for the demo? Uh, for the no, for the Scania bus, for okay. the long uh, uh, the bus uh, the fifty meter bus is in Sweden. Yes, I've been to Sweden twice uh, okay. to look at the demo and to. Uh, look at the testing facility. I even drove the bus uh, in, in Sweden, the, the 15 meter bus. And it was quite easy actually. Like, like I said, the technology is not a problem. The problem is more on towards the public, the public and the road uh, user. As of, since we already have the success story of it, uh, Scania, so we've been approached by this ART. The same thing for us to get the temporary approval for it to operate in Malaysia. Uh, it's supposed to come in sometimes in September. So the same thing, this one I think is more ex uh, extensive because we have to look, because it's longer, 30 meter, double the, the, the 50 meter bus. And uh, we have to look into the, not only uh, uh, the, uh, about the, but I, like I said, the technology is not so bad. The, the people, how people will behave. If you see the BRT, if, if you see why the BRT, why we have elevated thing is because of uh, in Indonesia, if they don't do elevated uh, path or uh, road for the BRT, other road users will come in. That is the main issue about that. So that is our main issue, our main concern that 
I think for this ARP, we going our study will be more more detailed. We have to look into the blind spot. We have to look into um, how the drivers uh, react and so on. See, I think in the art, you have around 300 passengers maximum. Uh, yes, yeah, 300 passengers. So I have a more. problem statement or uh, you can take this as a research uh, uh, idea. Okay. Uh, so see, all the transports, whatever see, we see all over the world, it is not always, uh, it fills the capacity. Sometimes yeah. you may have 300, sometimes you may have three on non-peak hours. Yeah. So, uh, is there a possibility to design a transport uh, which can be flexible size? Okay, uh, like you can just now when you can see about the art, that's why it has the articulated. It is uh, at the moment the one that we show that three hundred passenger is for three carriages. Uh, so if you do not have many passenger, then you can just make it two. Just but you have both it both it uh, because the 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 art will move like this and just move. It's not going to turn. So it has both it like like the LRT or the MRT. So it's just like train with both head front and back because they are not going to do a turn. You so can make it yes, 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 we can. The carriages can be removed. Oh. It's modular. It's a modular. It's a modular type. So it is so, only you are removing the carriages. Is it possible to compress and make it smaller so that the roads will not occupy bigger space of the transport when more people are not there? Uh, the, only, the only thing that we just can remove the middle of the carriage, the head and both head we cannot remove and it's already a standard size. Uh, so if we have more, then we, the carriages can go up to five carriages. Okay. That, that's why, okay. So, but that, the, the maximum that we can do is just, uh, what do you call, two, two, two carriages. Okay, so we, we can at least have about 100 plus passengers. The drones were really uh, interesting. Uh, yes, we have quite a number. Quite a number of people are asking about drones. I'm, I'm uh, not too much of the uh, expert in uh, now nowadays in drone. My, my time has passed. Uh, uh, the with the latest one, but more on this uh, nowadays. I'm working on the drone or the flying cars uh, governance. Like you said the legislation. Uh, Are you also is, experienced or uh, expertise? You have expertise in the artificial intelligence, sensors, machine learning, deep learning, or you are only concentrating on the mechanical part or uh, the uh, the aero part of uh, vehicle. Okay. Uh, now, uh, okay, like Dr. Rizan and all that, they they go deep with with, uh, with the sensor and so on. But myself, at the moment, I'm just on the mechanical part and and the legislation. Yeah. Because uh, uh, that one, because we have other teams, uh, we have like, like you said from uh, Prof Nasir from the EE. So we have the team from people from electrical electronics. Yeah. Okay. So that's a wonderful uh, session. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And okay. uh, participants, if you have any questions, please ask. I have the chat here. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Uh, good day, ma'am. It was an awesome presentation and an awesome right. video. Thank Actually, you. we had a virtual experience of coming <laughs> into your location and traveling right. in your area. It was a good experience. And as thank a woman, you. we feel proud about your profile and congratulations for that. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks for Dr. Vishu for arranging a wonderful session in this. Thank, thank you. you. And uh, yeah, I hope like India also will uh, compete one day with these all digital <laughs> uh, transportation. Why not I hope. all those uh, brain? Yes, yes. Brain we are yeah. developing. We are we are developing, and hope we'll come out soon with these all uh, transport infrastructures too. <laughs> And yeah, I have yeah. two questions, ma'am. I do not know like yeah, whether sir. it will come under your domain. Uh, uh, since I belong to computer science division, I have some two questions in that. So okay. if we can address with that, uh, I hope like if it is not, I have no issue with that. Right, uh, no because problem. since uh, since it is completely, your uh, transport is completely digitalized, like since we have a possibility of huge data. Okay. Since we are addressing the problem of big data also, yes, like yes, how yes. come this data centers, this IT industry, IT infrastructure has been maintained? How greener it is, how eco-friendly it is? Or what are the measures you are taking for making an uh, eco-friendly environment for this IT industry? If it is possible for you to address, you can just tell me. Because okay. since I am here to listen about uh, computer science division. Okay, okay. Yeah, you are from computer. Uh, um, may, may I get your, your uh, question again? You are talking about data. No, I am talking about uh, uh, information technology infrastructure, the data centers okay. where the data will be resided. Since okay. everything is digital, you have a huge data now, right? Yes, so the yes. data will be 
put in a data center so how come this data center will become a greener data center because you have completely digitalized so definitely a huge data is been accumulating so how it has been how the problem of this has been addressed okay. how the okay. carbon footprint has been addressed okay okay uh, i i cannot answer uh, for yeah, the for, no, the, no, for sure. the for the, the the train and all that because i have mm. no experience with with the train but i can answer the one that i've been working with uh, uh, with uh, Scania 50 meter bus. Okay, I have visited, okay. I have visited the control center. Visited, okay. Okay, so like you said, uh, they have uh, real-time uh, uh, real uh, data, but they keep the data so far that they keep is, I think they only keep about only for, if not mistaken, uh, for 48 hours or something like that, for, for a week. After that, they override. They override the okay. data mm -hmm. unless okay. and, and that the same thing because right because I remember that we we ask them because we have a video we put a mm -hmm. camera when we have to monitor the traffic uh, conflict uh, every day we have to go to the the bus driver will mm -hmm. give us the the chip with all the videos that we have so they will transfer and then say for example if we forget for example during the weekend we forget and we ask them for the for the recording of the bus, you know, because the bus trip is about eight hours, okay. uh, and then uh, they will say, "So sorry, we override." So okay. they will only keep if there is an accident. Okay. 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 So but also make it efficient, so not to keep, uh, not to store huge data. Yes. No. If if it's, there's no no uh, accident or no incident and all, they will override automatically. They will they will override. Uh, they will override the the <coughs> the, the system. And as you said, for the you were talking the carbon footprint. Car carbon footprint. Uh, uh, carbon mm. footprint. What they do is that they they have a, a they okay one from the bus from the bus. I cannot speak to about the train. Yes, yes, I can the, talk about the, transport. Yes, uh, yeah, about the bus that we, we monitor. About the bus is that uh, from the FMS system. Uh, number one, they control the maximum speed of the bus is only ninety kilometer per hour. So you cannot exceed more, even though you are on a highway, the uh, expressway that you can just uh, press your pedal to 200 km per hour. No, they mm. stop it at nine, 90 km per hour because I think 90 is considered for me in the engineering is that is the, the best uh, speed and we use the, the most best fuel efficient. So they only can go to, to 90 km. And another thing is that, say for example, they can monitor if the bus is idle for, they, they give a, a time also. Uh, they would not allow, say for the bus, the trip is 8 hours, 8 to 12 hours. Uh, so if the bus have to stop and switch off the engine. If, say for example, they found that they, they can monitor that if the bus is, say for example, switch off more than, I think 15 minutes or something like that, then they will call the driver, ask them to switch off. Switch off the, okay. uh, the to bus. avoid heat generation, so that uh, the carbon so footprints will yes, be reduced. Yes, due because to idling, idling is the one that causes a lot of yes. uh, uh, carbon emissions. So yes. they, they have all that. They monitor that. They they even see they even see the bus driver behavior. So how many times you break? How many times you have emergency brake? Whether you are uh, how 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 do they work? In fact, the FMS system uh, have the they can even rate the the driver. So, like Scania, they even test, uh, they even, uh, what you call, uh, have a, a, a rating that, that even the driver doesn't know what is his performance. So, they, they, they rate the driver based on his performance, you know, how many times he makes emergency brake, how many times he speed, how many, how many times he leaves the, the bus on idle, and so on. So, that is the MMS, FMS system. So, that is the, I hope it answers your question. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. Like, it was an efficient way for uh, reducing the carbon emission or the carbon footprint. Yes. So, uh, in, so fact, much, in fact, I know some of the FMS system, they can even shut off the bus. Okay. Okay. So, if, say, for example, it's idling for this one, they just make sure that the engine is shut off. Then, uh, the, the, what you call, the driver have to restart again. So, they okay. have an automatic shut off. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you so much, Philip. Thank, Thank you so much for your uh, answers. I hope okay. I'm satisfied with your answers. Thank okay. you. Okay, so nice meeting you. Nice meeting Thank you. you. Well. Hopefully you Thanks, come Dr. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's great, uh, Dr. Wan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm happy <laughs> for us. And I can answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's nice. That's nice. And uh, can I request all of you to turn on your uh, video, please, for a virtual photograph? No, okay. 
Hello, Professor Nazir, you are here. <laughs> oh, from Nazir, yes, Professor. I've been listening quietly. Yeah. Oh, from <laughs> you monitoring me <laughs> while I've been talking. <laughs> Professor Nazir, I could see a lot of art, art, art going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is very good. The art yeah. was. Yeah. yeah, can you all please uh, turn on your video? Today we are in the final day of the first FDP. All of you, please. Dilli Rani. Yes, can I have a sweet smile from all of you, please? Smile. You smile. Okay. Yeah, it's wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay, so thank, uh, you so Dr. thank you so much, Dr. Thank you so much. Can you just give a valedictory uh, closure for uh, the um, FDP successful uh, completion of all your wonderful uh, jewels of UITM? Okay. <laughs> Okay, I think, Prabhusha, you have been organizing a very amazing uh, webinars, and I'm thankful that I, uh, I've been able to recommend some of our lecturers uh, to participate and share their findings, their knowledge, their research. And in fact, I mentioned to you before, we are very much um, in welcoming mode to collaborate with international researchers and international consultants. So, Again, going through from Monday until today, uh, there have been a lot been presented by our speakers. So maybe some of um, participant, international participant in the audience, in the participant, may be interested to join some of our research work or consultant work. And today, Dr. Wan, you know, in Malay, um, one is a title, but then. You translate the English is only single one. So the one is a special person in Malaysia, uh, one of a, a specific uh, with special expertise. Uh, I think you all witnessed the presentation just now. So I'm happy to have her in our department. So uh, today and also the previous days, we have so many opportunities to work together. And the lady that just asked, asked question just now on the um, uh, big data or computer science or uh, computer side. We also have a big work on um, um, computer side, big data, uh, artificial intelligence and all that. And for everybody's information, our university is a massive university. We have 160,000 students and the, uh, we have about 10,000 lecturers. So we are massive and everywhere in Malaysia. So again, uh, I congratulate Prof. Usha for organizing these very successful uh, events. It's not easy to do and um, I think even on our side to get the international participant and international speaker to come together under one roof uh, is not an easy task. So again, congratulations. Maybe in future uh, we can work, again, work together again in organizing similar event or better. Thank you very much. That's really nice of you, a uh, wonderful uh, session and this one week has been uh, really amazing. We learned a lot and uh, happy to meet all achievers and um, uh, though they are all, uh, you're all academicians, you, you extend a lot of uh, support to the country and you do a big, big projects, uh, which is really amazing and uh, we are very happy to be part of uh, having you as part of our uh, webinar. And definitely we will have some uh, more future uh, webinars with you with uh, more uh, topics and more achievers. So thank we you. We better so announce your webinar next week that we are organizing. I, I, I yeah. will be I'm already ready. Even today I'm ready to present. Okay. You. okay. Uh, <laughs> so I see you next week then on yeah, Monday. <laughs> Okay. I'm really waiting to see your audience and uh, very, very uh, interesting. You'll be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're very quiet. I get surprised and you don't. <laughs> Usually our webinars, we have many, many participants and it's quite interesting to see the profile of the participants. 
Yes, yes. Uh, Wonderful, uh, Dr. Nazir, once again. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. You, uh, Dr. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All, um, all the uh, speakers, right from Monday to uh, today, uh, Zuhani, Nofri, and uh, Uzaimi, and uh, you yeah. both. So thank you so much. God thank bless you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. God bless you too. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. Love to, love, I, I really like I said to you, I uh, really love to work with, like you said, for motivating the, the woman. I think that would be my next agenda uh, to promote uh, women to join in aviation and engineering and so yes. on. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Prof. Husha, last year in our university, the best academician was the woman. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> That's great. That's great. And uh, they're all uh, lucky to have you as uh, their boss. Yesterday, Uzaimi yeah. was really appreciating you. And uh, he, I was just asking, like, uh, where, did you have any experience uh, working with any nano satellites or any satellites in any team? He said, no, this is the first experience. And how were you uh, inspired? Who was your inspirer? He said, Dr. Nazir. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's very nice to listen from uh, people, you know, like when uh, they take us as an inspiration and uh, right. they feel that we motivate them and for all the uh, success. He said, even uh, I do a big world level project or country level project, I'm still an academician and I teach. And uh, the only added factor is the motivation from our boss and the employees around uh, the university appreciations. This is what is the tonic for all our uh, uh, teaching yeah. fraternity. So that's a, a very good uh, message he passed on and uh, it, it was very nice. We also uh, learned a lot about the nano satellites and the launch we had. It was a wonderful thing. Yeah, we have been uh, learning a lot about the microwave. She told like how the microwave was invented with the chocolate melted. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, with no free, with the solar and yourself with the academic, uh, uh, how uh, you can improve the integrity. And Pro, the Pro Usha, you were very lucky. You were very lucky to get Dr. No free coming on for your webinar because she's the only expert in Malaysia for energy econometric um, areas. Yeah. So, so she's a special lady. Yeah. No, no, all of you are special and I should yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> again and again, thank you for giving me such a wonderful opportunity to have you all and made me feel very proud of this, uh, conducting this international webinar. And our participants are also very happy about uh, all these five days learning a lot. Seeing you all itself is an inspiration for all of us. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, see you again thank then. You. I think we are ending the session today. Yes, yes. 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 Okay. 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 Thank you so much. Thank see you. you next week. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you. you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for this conference. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, participants, uh, we will be sending the feedback link shortly, and uh, the certificates. I uh, cannot automate it because I wanted to add your photographs in the certificates. Please give me some time so that I have to do it manually one by one. And uh, the second FDP, international FDP uh, poster has been shared in the WhatsApp group. And uh, you can uh, enroll yourself and lots to come and be with our seek and we can seek knowledge together. Thank you so much.